Hey guys, uh, a little bit of an update on the car. It's been a little bit since you guys have seen it. Um, as you guys have already seen, the rear end is pretty much in and done. Um, I just finished installing the uh, fuel tank. I need to touch up a little bit because I scratched it a little bit uh, installing it, but no big deal. Just a little bit of black spray paint will bring it back to its uh, former glory. But uh, anyway, so yeah, the Evo 5 fuel tank is installed and uh, some of the fuel system is done. Um, and it's a pretty built fuel system actually. Uh, it's only the first part of it, but. Uh, you see you've got two 10 gauge wires here coming off of uh, off of the battery terminal and they are fused these are uh, STM's uh, rewire kit a fuel pump rewire kit so these are fused they go through the original uh, wiring pass through in the firewall and then they run along the floorboard underneath here um, in a wiring track, there's a wiring track that follows underneath here. They come out back here <coughs> and uh, they run up to uh, two relays which I'm mounting behind here underneath this panel and the relays are triggered by the original fuel pump power wire here and uh, when that triggers them then uh, they uh, um, provide direct current from the battery to power the fuel pumps instead of uh, instead of the single 18 gauge from the ECU. We've got two 10 gauge wires coming from the battery now. Um, eventually, it'll be one 10 gauge wire for each fuel pump because I'm planning on running dual fuel pumps in this car. But uh, for right now, um, it's set up just kind of stockish. Uh, got the uh, the sender over there. And uh, replace this with a Walber 255 in this fuel pump holder. But I've actually got a second one of these fuel pump holders. And I'm going to put it over there with a second Walber 255. So that should give me about 510 liters per hour of fuel flow. Which is uh, supposedly enough for 1,000 horsepower. And since I'm planning on 850 with this car, that should be a pretty good fuel setup for pump gas for me. And uh, maybe even some E85 later. But for now, uh, it's just a single 255 in there uh, with the fuel pump rewire. And then uh, I drilled a hole for ground right here. So uh, the pumps are grounded right here. So anyway, so I need to clean it up a little bit more. But uh, it's more or less wired now, so that's good. And uh, yeah, so that should be pretty cool once I get all that buttoned up. Um, but... We got most of the interior put back. I uh, sold my head unit. I'll be getting another one of those later, but uh, right now need that cash to do some work on the engine. And there's no point in having a nice stereo in a car that doesn't run. So you might have noticed when I walked up here a minute ago, I have the all-wheel drive transmission and transfer case installed, the Evo 4 parts and the starter. Um, and I also finished uh, installing all the EVO wiring in this car. Uh, what we did was ended up drilling a second hole through the firewall right here, which comes out uh, right behind the heater core box. And there's just enough room for me to run the wires uh, down to the center there. And the ECU has been moved from the passenger side kick panel uh, to the center of the car underneath, uh, underneath the shifter cables which you might be able to see. It's kind of a mess. Uh, you might not be able to see it. Oh yeah, you can see it in there. So I'm gonna mount the EC there instead to simplify wiring. And uh, it really did too, so. Uh, and then I made two extension harnesses for the B64 and B65 plugs that are in here to run down to the center of the car. And uh, with those two extension harnesses and the EC mounted in the middle, uh, that's uh, really all I needed to do for wiring. Uh, it should work. Uh, I say should because without an engine in the car, I can't say it does work. But everything should be good. Um, the starter was one of the circuits that's not exact in the harness. 
and uh, I put the key in and turn it over and the starter does kick on. So I know I've got that wired properly and the rest of the stuff should be set up right as well. Um, and then you might have noticed the intercooler pipe, uh, pipes in there as well. The coupe actually has the bolt holes for the intercooler pipes. Uh, so I uh, just kind of threw the intercooler on there with the pipes just because it looks cool. And threw the evil four headlights and corner lights kind of on. They don't really mount up to the coupe, but I was just kind of playing around with them. So, um, But anyway, so that's all done. Uh, everything's wired. The transmission and transfer case are in. Uh, I've got a little bit of stuff to put back together over here just to get the car rolling. Um, and the front suspension is totally done now, too. Um, I was having some problems after I put in the uh, caster kit with the nuts backing off the control arms. So I was going to buy some castle nuts. I found out that they are M15 one and a half thread pitch and there is no way to get new ones. So what we ended up doing, you can see that, is uh, cutting the stock nut, uh, cutting slots in it, and then drilling through the arm for a cotter pin and that should keep those nuts from backing off of there again. So uh, once we got that done, uh, the front suspension is pretty much finished now. So that's all taken care of and done. And that made the car roller again. So I just need to put the hood on it. And I think here, here pretty soon, another week or two, should be uh, seeing about getting my uh, drive shaft made. You can see it, uh, it fit, it'll, it'll fit perfectly. Um, just because the floor in this car and the Evo are pretty much the same. Um, the drive shaft tunnels there on the Mirage. It's just not used, obviously. So, you might be able to see it better here. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, you can see it a lot better here. So, uh, yeah. It's coming along. But, uh, there is a, uh, a meet in, I believe it's pronounced Zinnia, Ohio. May 31st uh, for All Wheel Drive Army, and I'm going to try my hardest to have this car there. Um, of course, we know how that goes. It might not happen, but uh, I'm going to shoot for it, so we'll see what happens. But I've got my uh, block pulled out, and should be taking it to the machine shop here um, next this week or next week. Uh, it needs an align bore since I switched it over to main studs. And uh, after it's got the line bore done, I've got a manly forged 100 millimeter crankshaft and uh, Cosworth main bearings and thrust bearings and rod bearings uh, set to go in. And I should be ordering a set of manly turbo tough I beam rods and Weisco 1400 HD pistons um, here in a week or so uh, to get the bottom end built. And uh, just because of the time crunch and the cash crunch at the same time with uh, building a whole engine, which is not cheap, obviously, um, I'm going to build the bottom end. Uh, it's going to have a brand new timing kit, brand new oil pumping gears, uh, balance shaft elite, um, brand new water pump, of course, and I'm probably going to get L19 head studs to put in there. And then... Even with that built bottom end, I think uh, we're probably just going to clean the head up a little bit. Uh, probably go ahead and paint my valve cover because uh, that doesn't cost anything. And I think I'm just going to throw the head on there completely stock and uh, throw a stock Evo Turbo on it just to get it rolling. That way it's uh, not anything too crazy for the brake in. And uh, we'll just get the thing going. But. Um, hopefully, yeah, I think it's 11 weeks from today, so hopefully I'll be able to have the, the whole thing, whole engine built and dropped in, and uh, a friend of mine is giving me an X2100 HD clutch, um, so I can, to use, uh, to get the engine in, and, uh, I think that's everything, really, I think that it should be, it should be able to run, um. I need to get the coupe bumper back up here and my old headlights and corner markers and put those back on and uh, clearance the coupe bumper for the intercooler, which shouldn't be a big deal. And uh, yeah, 
it should be should be rolling and it'll be kind of funny actually um so i'm not gonna have time to get the paint any paint work done i don't think before the meet so it's pretty much gonna look like a stock mirage uh except with with some nice wheels on it unless you notice the brakes uh for the all-wheel drive army meet which is which both kind of sucks and is kind of hilarious at the same time because I don't think anybody would suspect a stock looking Mirage to uh, have as much power as it's going to have. So even, even with the stock turbo and the stock head, it should it should definitely be in the uh, 300, 350 range uh, with the tune, depending on uh, whether or not I've got it broken or not by then. So, But uh, yeah, so that's the update. Uh, there's not really too much to see. Uh, a lot of work. I've gotten done on it, but really nothing that's, you know, substantial enough that you're going to notice. So, but hopefully once the engine's in, then, uh, then it'll really be something to see. So anyway, that's the update for now, guys. So I hope you enjoy the video and, uh, look forward to more. It's going to be uh, an exciting next couple weeks.